welcome. It's a pleasure for me to acknowledge your presence and welcome you to our commemoration of the Holocaust sponsored by the Jewish community of the Balearic Island, a cultural association that is called Limud Mallorca and the municipality of Palman. Today is January the 22nd and we commemorate uh, the 76th anniversary of Auschwitz uh, concentration field in Poland. Uh, today is the commemoration day of the Holocaust. During 14 years, uh, we have an official commemoration memory. And uh, a new candle for the minorities and the people undergoing notwithstanding it is imp impossible not to commemorate today our program is entitled well as uh, present past and future. First of all, we will listen to Juan Jerez, who will discuss the best refugees who lived in 1930 decade, and we will share an unknown history of this community. Later, we will listen to Josh Gunsberger, a North American uh, resident of the island, who will interview his father, Mosher, a survivor of the Holocaust. Uh, who is now in uh, New York. Later, we will give the floor to Ariel Giron, the current president of the Jewish community of the Balearic Island, and uh, we will uh, observe a minute's service. And then we will listen to Mariano, who will discuss about the future, the initiative uh, that we took uh, share with the municipality of Palma and the association in visiting all the public school in Palma to talk about Holocaust with the student to avoid the consequences of hatred and intolerance. Thank you so much for your being here and I hope you could understand something and learn something you do not doubt to get in touch with us, do not hesitate or to receive. Forget about this, never. Now it's the floor goes to Juan Perez to share his presentation with us. Hi everyone, first of all, I wish to thank you for the invitation I received from the Jewish community of the Balearic Island and the municipality of Mallorca as like a conversation among friends, as I see it. And the ideas that we would like to discuss, the situation of refugees uh, uh, Jewish refugees on the island uh, and analyze the official interest on this history and the path that um, Juan Juan, perdona, si puedes uh, bajar la velocidad un poco, sería fantástico. Sí. Gracias. We could tell you something about how we got this information. They were hidden, so I prepared a presentation. Do not worry. This is not going to be PowerPoint kind of presentation. There are pictures that I'm going to show you. Just the beginning, how we uh, found this information. 
and then we will go back to Mallorca in the 30s uh, uh, into two steps. Uh, the kind of refugees who started to arrive on the island and starting from 33 and then after 37 and they have different kind of refugees uh, i'm going to show you a few documents and we will answer some questions about responsibilities from the government uh, Franco and the situation of these refugees and then uh, we we will let you have some links in case you need to know more well what's the beginning of all these first of all uh, we work uh, um, with a friend of mine and uh, the first news that was published uh, in the newspaper of Mallorca in 2014 I live in a small village of 5,000 inhabitants uh, where nothing happens in the middle of and this and i got to discover that two jewish refugees uh, from germany were were the owners of a photography shop what about these two um german jewish and how they disappear the shop was closed and nobody knew where they were they disappear this is the beginning of a story and here started our investigation uh we ended up in a documentary film and an exhibition that we uh had last year with the sponsorship of the government and the round table experts of Holocaust in which is a subject that we don't know how what was the experience of the Holocaust in Spain? What does peop what do people know? And uh, uh, we called Marta Simon Valentín de Barcelona y muchos expertos uh, that investigated on the presence of refugees in Spain and to get closer to that period of the 30s you should know that in Mallorca there was a Jewish community it was the the picture of the Germany of that time, half of German were Nazis and the other half were refugees for political reason or for being Jews. So it was a picture of the time. Here you have three photographs taken in Mallorca. Here you have a meeting of May 1st in the Playa de Portals. Here you have uh, on the bottom um, uh, a movie uh, that was shown here. And here you have uh, the Jefe de Falange in Mallorca holding a portrait of Hitler. This union between Falangistas and uh, Nazis, uh, the it was a very fruitful collaboration. Uh, 
it was aimed at pursuing and detecting undesirable subjects and this Mallorca at the beginning of the 30s we had 3,000 German uh, citizens or residents in Palma uh, the Germany of uh, refugees and the Germany of uh, uh, Nazis, and this is what is particular, particularly interesting here. We have uh, artists uh, and uh, writers and Kalarajada uh, and his its municipalities for hundred uh, inhabitants they have out of 400 they had 200 uh, foreign people with people like Jack Bilbo who became famous as the bodyguard of Al Capone Jack Bilbo is his nickname. Here you can see some pictures of a comic and it's called Tante Vusi. Uh, of a Jewish sí, family sí, living in. Juan, un pelín más lento también, un pelín más despacito. Muchas gracias. As you can see, this cartoon was showing this Jewish family in Mallorca and this kind of advertising campaign that German people was watching talking about a paradise island and uh, and where life was inexpensive and uh, the fact uh, that we couldn't imagine it was that people came here because of health issues uh, for, for a person or a person and a family and 28, uh, someone came here for health issues and two years after, in 1940, uh, he will be sent to a concentration camp in Spain. Uh, Olivia, with this uh, image of uh, contrast, uh, to see how this community was completely polarized or divided into two different uh, parts and groups. In 1936, uh, with the triumph uh, uh, in Mallorca of the Golpe of the Puch, uh, we have uh, an ascent of these um, Communist artists, pacifists, uh, they understand they cannot stay there. Manu Valentin, uh, a detective, uh, that's what they say in this newspaper. As you can see here, that uh, Jewish are being ousted. We have references here. It was to be seen that the triumph of the phalangist mentality and Franco mentality could see uh, the Jewish people like communists or artists, undesirable people. 
and for Jewish people, life was not going to be easy. So in 1937, um, Jewish flee the island. The English consul helps uh, many of them to run away to leave the island uh, in 1937 um, we had only 150 refugees remained 1938 we have another uh, movement of refugees towards Mallorca that has been studied more in delay. They got to Menorca in 1938. We know that from our um, records uh, and one of the evidence uh, is that they had to Israel Ostara as name uh, or can you possibly have a worse than salt uh, for a person to ask them to change their name this is a very uh, strong sin against uh, the personality there are in a way, like Leo Fischer um, said that he thought, he hoped so much to run away because he was convinced that someone could kill Hitler. That's, uh, why did you stay there? And he said, we thought that someone could kill Hitler, and we were waiting for that to happen. 39, 1939, we found this group of five uh, German nationals uh, coming to Spalazzo from Hamburg via Tangeri, Tetuan, Malaga. Barcelona, Palma, Esporles. This picture is taken in uh, Tanker, Tanger, and this is the photographer. You see how they carry all their belongings. Tanger is an international city uh, where they shoot Casablanca, the movie. It's like a, an occasion of a new life for many of them. I never heard about Breslau, it was the fifth biggest city in Germany with an a very large uh, Jewish community. We found many Jewish uh, in Miranda, in Minorca dos. We have this photographer that opened his shop in Carles San Pedro in Esporlas, uh, and he took the picture of the Jefe de Falange uh, in his wedding day. You see here Esporlas, and here is the shop, the photographer's shop. The name of the five people who came here in the small village suffering uh, a great depression after the war 
Leo Fischer, Hans Meyer Klassen, his wife Liz Meyer Klassen, Dalbert Ritter, Henriette Ritter. Henriette and Lizzie were siblings, uh, and uh, to all these women that were following the love of their lives uh, and they follow their destiny all over the world. And this is quite hard to think that they are, many of these men were married with, with uh, genteel women and uh, Dalbert and Henriette could only resist for one month. And then we found them in Tangier and they were buried there. And as often happen when one in a couple dies, the other in a couple dies, the other person. So let's focus uh, on the life of Leo for data. First of all, I wish to show you why are we talking about this? Uh, why do we talk about official anti-Semitism, uh, bureaucracy anti-Semitism? You see the document of Haria Rita. She was staying at Hotel Catalonia in Calle Cruz. This is the key. Uh, a civil servant wrote a, a, a red jota in a document that a woman was not Jewish, but she got married with a Jew. And if you compare this picture, you see this passport. It was a German a, a passport of a, a Jewish person. And the addition of Israel uh, to the name. So the only presence of this Chota, uh, of this J, is the symbol of so many things. Uh, here I'm showing you, and I apologize for the English or American speaking, it's a very uh, cold and bureaucratic language. This is a file, a uh, record of the police uh, for a German Jewish person. This is a spotless. And here they explain their daily life. Uh, he show uh, to be supporting the new La Nueva España. They had to behave properly and out of curiosity, he does not intend to give up to its being German uh, national. And he he's supposed to be against Hitler regime uh, and uh, it is thought to be uh, to have abandoned his country for being Jew. These were the kind of record that every month uh, police officer were preparing on each person. The expulsion order they only remained nine months in Spain and the order they issued uh, is a demonstration of their behavior. The subject German of Jewish and Hans Israel Mayer 
class and uh, residing in this capital, I inform your excellence that given his past and his origin, his undesirable for the new Spain. So he had no um, crime or no kind of behemoth, all Jews uh, residing in Mallorca are chased on the same day they are ousted. And it's like a that sentence because they have no documents. It's 1940 and France had Thing, and they have nowhere to go. They maybe could go to Lisbon to go to America. This is a police record on the conduct of a Jewish Alemán. This was Spain of those years. Leo, we started to love this is his business card of his shop here you can see him a number and here you can see leo in the concentration camp of miranda de ebro in this camp is where the majority of Jewish, they couldn't escape from Spain to go to Portugal. Leo took pictures as a photographer inside the camp. This picture is incredible. This is the inside of a cell of a barrack inside the concentration camp and is full of dignity the way he stares at the camera. You see a list here, you can see. Yeah, it's the alphabetic order of Jewish that are prisoners in Miranda. This is not a extermination camp, but they are going prison as a prisoners. Uh, uh without any embassies assisting there for some cigarettes or chocolates in miranda we have all foreigners with no documents polish people and people from all over the world it's like a united nation representation you see the names here and the place of birth or origin, Vienna, Berlin, Breslau, Budapest, Riga, Wien, Pavia. This concentration camp, this group of Jewish are a sample of what's happening in Europe with all nationalities and their uh, profession, uh, baker, violinist, uh, Goldenkranz used to live in Mallorca, as shown by, demonstrated by Manu Valentin in his investigation. Leo will be liberated in 43, thanks to the international attention he got, uh, the prisoners of Mirandan. Uh, they just stop eating as a protest. And this could be ironic if it wasn't tragic. As in Lise, the other couple living Hola, Juan, in the Hola, Juan, solo para avisarte, tenemos algunos cinco minutos más, ¿vale? Muchísimas gracias. Citizen could reach United States, they will live in New York, but they will come back to Mallorca uh, in the 50s. Uh, 
has died in Andrad, and it's where he was spurred. This is uh, pictures of other refugees, uh, the Melcher family. This is the Ramla's font, and you see the children and the kangaroo. Angelica lives in Brazil, in Rio de Janeiro. We talked to her. We tried to get an interview, but she didn't accept. We are gathering stories from everywhere. Truth is the majority. survived but with much pain. Ernst Albert Kaufmann, banker, and his son Alts Rurik, his wife Eva. He ended up in Miranda in the concentration camp. In forty three he was free. He was liberated and set free. Ernst Unirene Heyman a son a tragic case. Uh, he was an engineer when uh, he received the order to go away. He committed suicide uh, and they are victims uh, of the Holocaust in Mallorca. They are buried in Palma. I leave you here with tools to get to know more. These are, are the links. These are the three in inclusions. Holocaust was here and residents helped refugees. And we had the attempt to hide this information of Franco at the end of the, the war sat in front of the international community destroying all these documents. Uh, thank you. And to you have a documentary film on the community. We are just working on another documentary. And the memories of Heinz Kraczewski, a pacifist, a Voices Fallen from the Sky, Manu Valentin, his book, Voices Caída da Stilo, it's an incredible book, The Undesirable, The Expulsion of Jewish Davis Evaliades. Los, uh, the Jewish in Ibiza got but received the baptism and were saved. You see here a list of books and uh, documents uh, that you can use to expand your knowledge on the subject, uh, on the life of these Jewish in Menorca. Uh, Marta Simo Sanchen and another study on the subject. And uh, a picture of Leo and Angelica. Let's leave it here with optimism. Leo in Wales, he opened his shop in uh, in uh, St. Peter's Street. And by chance, it was another Calle San Pedro in 1972 and Angelica, she's still alive. Here you have my email, my Twitter, keep in touch. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you so much.
for those who are who have just arrived, you can choose the language you would like to listen. It's a great honor to introduce Josh Jonesberger, who lives here in Mallorca. And his father, Maurice Moshe, a survivor of the Holocaust, uh, who lives in New York, United States. Uh, he is there right now. And I'd like to invite uh, Josh and Maurice, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. My name is Joshua Gunsberger. I'm the son of a survivor of Shoah. Thank you for the privilege of uh, speaking or today, talking today. We have a short time to talk uh, a long story. We will try to condensate it. First of all, we will discuss, we will have a conversation with my father. If you, if you're ready, if you can unmute. Hi, Dad. We are here to celebrate and remember Holocaust and the survivor is the best person to share the story with you on such a special occasion. Thank you for being here. And I am thankful for you to be able to do for us today and for future generation. My father is 86 now, and he has been living in the US since 1963. He was a children's doctor for more than 50 years, and he is writing his history. So it's the story of his life, his biography. He has six children and six, looks like he had been married with my mom for 44 years. Thank you for letting me share his life. To start with, why don't we, could you tell us how your life started and how your childhood was before war? Well, I was born in Paris in 1934. My mother came from Romania and my father was from Hungary. And they got to France as a very young couple. Life in France was very nice, uh, music, and and says, and the president was Jew, Leon Blum was a Jew, and everybody was happy that we had a, a, a Jewish president, so we were not afraid, and uh, we were happy. We had uh, food, good atmosphere, music. I was at home as a very young boy and I was asleep in a room where my mom was uh, was working and my father uh, had a, a daily with Italian products. Why Italian? Because uh, he was a prisoner in Italy during World War One, and uh, for two years, he was held prisoner in Italy, and then he went to France. Uh, he didn't want to go back to Hungary. And so he went to France. He decided to go to France. And now, 
um, I was uh, going to the movies alone as a young boy when I was in the cinema I saw German with guns and and after the movies I ran home I went home I walked home little Malina and what did I see I see Germans and French women with flowers and kisses and the Germans seem very happy so I go home and I tell my mom hi there are Germans uh, in the street uh, and my mother look at my father it was a Sunday and uh, she woke up my father and said Carmen Germans are here in the street and he said I remember that very good he said tell tell your son they, they will never cross the Maginot line and then they will not cross that line uh, that was he said and then uh, the day after he realized that the German were in Paris and then uh, we had uh, my father my mom my father and I we we took a train to Spain and uh, we arrived to Perpignan and we wished to cross the border but the guards told us that we could not get in. Franco was against, uh, please go back to where you're coming from. So we had to go back to Paris and we We went to Switzerland as my father uh, had this Italian daily had money uh, in Switzerland as in why in Switzerland because uh, the money was circulating and then in Switzerland uh, we were caught, uh, the money was uh, found by the police and they took everything, our money disappeared and then we went back to Paris and in Paris and back to work and and someone a friend in the street a friend who was a policeman and he is talking English he told me Carmen no puedes you you cannot sleep I don't know if you're in the list but please uh, do not go to sleep to at home tonight and uh, the the day after on July the 15, 41, that I remember so well, is when the Rafle, they just uh, capture all the Jews in Paris and in other places too, that this was the day uh, with 50 buses that were full of people, they captured parents and children and everything they could, everyone uh, 
and it, they were taken to a place before Randif uh, before they were taken to Auschwitz and what happened there? We, we walked uh, in a, a street where a friend of my father, an Italian friend of my father, and we asked him if he could stay there and he put us in the basement. Uh, where he kept coal, charcoal for the heating. So we were sitting there in the dark without heating, with conditioning. Uh, we were there, sitting there on the ground, on the floor, waiting for the next day to come. And the following day, my father uh, went up to see what was happening. and. Uh, all Jewish uh, neighbors, they disappeared. Uh, the butcher, the baker, the entire community disappeared. And that uh, my father went back and I say, we cannot wait, do but waiting. And we waited for five months and a half. And after that, the and then the wife of this man told the German that we were so my father, my mother, and my sister and I, the way we were, we were taken to the train station. And we were in the middle of France, and France was divided into parts. Uh, and uh, the southern part of France, where the, the France the French people who were friends of the Vichy Republic, of the Maréchal Pétain, and so we walked there to o'clock. We crossed the border in the, at night, and it was impossible to believe. And so we crossed the border. Uh, between north and south, and we took a bus to a place uh, uh, called Neuville Bayeux, and we, we stayed there for two years and a half. And uh, Mayor, when we saw us, said, You are refugees. They didn't ask anything if we were Jewish or no. We need people to work. And so my father and my mother uh, worked as farmers, just like just like uh, Mexican, they were working as uh, as farmers, and uh, we were living uh, in a room. My sister, my father, my mother, and I, we were uh, all lodged in a small room. Uh, we could wash ourselves very seldom. And my mother said, well, you have to wash yourself. Uh, 
uh, I was wearing wooden uh, shoes. And the word sabotage comes from sabot, from these uh, shoes, because people from the Netherlands uh, put these wooden shoes in the in the machine to block them. So that's where the word sabotage comes from. But I was wearing sabot, and as I told my children, I didn't know whether it was winter or summer. I only had those shoes to wear, and I. I realized that it was hot or warm, but there was no difference in what I was wearing. I wasn't feeling cold or warm weather. Uh, we were living in the countryside. We, we didn't know anything there. We were living in this small town and all of a sudden one of my uncles came uh, with a driver, with a German Aleman. I saw him and I told my mom, I was, hey, and he said, I'm going to take care of your children. Uh, do not worry, I will take care about him. And my mom stared at us, and what do you mean by that? No, no, do not worry. And he went away. He was buying children. He got $50 per child. This was my family. And then my mom said, okay, so we went to Dordogne, my sister, also my cousin, she was very young, Alice and I, we were taken to a place where they needed people to work. They needed workers, workforce. And sometimes I had to take care of uh, cattle, of cattle, cows, um, goats. And that's what we were doing. We had to to take care of animals. So we stayed there for five months or so. And suddenly at night, I, I could understand the dialect they were speaking. And they, I heard them saying that we are going to sell them. How much do we earn for each of them? And I told my sister, they are going to sell us. Let's go away from here. And the same night we took a bus, we walked to the bus station. The same night uh, we, we went back to where my parents were. And this uh, a little story in 1944, Germ Germans were heading northwards, and so and uh, English planes and American. They were ten kilometers from the top, and they were bombing, and. Uh, British Spitfires, the Spitfires uh, were smaller planes and they were flying, they were visible. So I saw one, I could see one, I spotted one in the sky. So uh, 
I ran away and I saw the plane and I created a pilot. And uh, he went away, he came back and he was moving and shifting. And I told my mom, mom, the pilot was greeting me. And he said, no, it's impossible. And the airplane was uh, in the sky. What I saw, I saw horses and people half a horse what I saw the same night and what I heard it was people calling their moms what did you feel when you were liberated at the end of at the end of 44 when we went back to Paris. And in Paris, my mom thought that I needed to study something. And so there was uh, to a yeshiva and I started to read a bit, but it was a habit for rabbis to hit the head of children. And after two weeks, uh, I told my mom, I don't want to be hit. And so I went back home. And uh, from that moment on, the government said uh, that children that didn't get an education and and didn't go to primary school, had to uh, have an exam. So my mom bought me a bottle of black ink and uh, a plume to write. So I um, had to have an exam in the Lycée Voltaire. And uh, that was my first year at the Lycée in Paris and I passed the exam what did you feel when you saw American soldiers I I couldn't say that I was happy this is not the right word we were uh, close to their path and uh, they were giving out the chewing gum and chocolates. And it was the first time I ate chocolate in all my life. I was so happy and after chocolate, I never stopped loving chocolate. I've always loved chocolate since then. If someone wants to Give me something nice that's chocolate. Another question. How the Holocaust influenced your faith? Uh, what's your connection with your with God? I'm telling you that all the people I got to know. They were not religious. The only person uh, my mother and I were the only religious people because the majority, the rest of us were not uh, religious. Uh, uh, my brother-in-law's mother ended up in Auschwitz. My 
grandparents ended up in Auschwitz and uh, Birkenau. And the moment they came, uh, they ended up in, in the oven. So I always told people when they were asking me, where is your God? Well, anti-Semitism I see today uh, it's not something of yesterday. It's 3,000 years old. Antisemitism dates back to 3,000 years old in many places. Antisemitism was here already. Remember, it didn't start in gas chambers with politicians dividing the people. Wish, mothers, and it started with intolerance and hate speech. When people stop caring, they become desensitized and turn blind eyes to the blight of the Jewish people. Uh, when there is a problem, it's only to blame the Jews. This is what you would like you to understand. Your children, your grandchildren, what, when they wake up, in the morning and say Shema Israel when they go to bed twice a day they have to say that and remember what happened because who knows uh, please prepare your baggage your luggage as always tell them and to listen to the stories and histories of the past and to learn from them uh, uh, so that they could never experience what I experienced, what we experienced. Uh, it's 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Uh, um, Believe me, the only way uh, to avoid anti-Semitism is that children learn what happened, they, they, they listen to what happened because this experience should never repeat itself. I remember when my grandfather or Mauricio Mich said that uh, this could happen in Spain or France. Uh, well, they haven't told us that the virus does not come from Israel, so we would like to share with all the participants. My message would be that you could learn from history and listen and, and talk to these children. This is very important. If, if you don't teach children, you don't tell them what happened, then someday you're going to experience the same and I want to be here and you wouldn't like to be here. So I was in Spain during Franco regime. Um, Yavero, 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 it was olden key of old people. 
and I know what does it mean. So our spirit is our is stronger than the obstacles that we had to face. I was uh, I was a child, but my children had a childhood as a pediatrician. There's, I had been an I was a pediatrician from 1961, and when uh, Spaniards came and was asking for money. And I always replied, you pay what you can. When I had, uh, and uh, they asked my nurse, they paid $1, $2, what they could pay. And I was so happy that I could do something positive for these people coming from Spain. Thank you so much, Dad. Thank you so much for listening to his story. Remember him in Israel. I have no, no words. Thank you so much. With us, I was quite strong, and you have to know. We are so, we have been so happy to listen to you. So many people are thanking you for your courage, for your, for sharing your life with us. It is very important. I hope uh, we can count on you for the future uh, to continue telling us your story. Thank you, Josh, for organizing and uh, for this interview, for sharing this special moment with us. We have a white program. I have the honor to introduce Ariel Girondi, he's the current president of the synagogue of the Jewish community of the Balearic Island, that is going to tell us a few words. Thank you, Ari. May I speak? Thank you. Thank you so much for being here, uh, especially to Moish Gunsberger and Josh for their interview so the experience of Juan Perez uh, and the experience of Moshe Osberger. Thank you both of the Jewish community of Balearic Alias every year uh, celebrate uh, upon the uh, invitation of the parliament the Holocaust Day this year given the situation the health issues so we we had to uh, adapt it. Uh, Ari, perdona, si puedes ir un pelín más despacito, un poco más lento, sería fantástico. Muchas gracias. Perdón. We are waiting for the situation to be increasing and the health problem could be more suitable for a public uh, celebration at the parliament this 
year, I'd like to say something special uh, as to what Juan Perez told us and the experience, the personal experience of Morse. I was thinking about a poem by Borges titled Everness, saying, one thing does not exist, oblivion. God saves the metal and the dross. Well, basically, this is what happened uh, with the historiography of the Shoah. Uh, what happened was going from a guilty silence uh, to a variety of methods uh, each time more closer to the reality with very important studies. What Juan Perez said, we had uh, some aspects that were not treated the way they should have been, but bibliography, historiography of the Shoah has a very important entity, identity. What is true is that there is a negationist, a denial. I, I, I don't want to enhance this, but we have to remember that as nowadays uh, uh, with uh, important groups uh, and the internet uh, trying to see an anti-Semitism with a faraway origin, like in 1961, when Dr. Servatius, who was the lawyer of Eichmann in the Jerusalem trial, he declared that Eichmann uh, completed actions for which uh, he would if he won, he would have received uh, a medal and losing uh, uh, would have been hanged. And the cynicism is incredible. And this cynicism is what should we should consider the intention of these comments. Uh, the comments that have reached us today is uh, like uh, emptying the moral to human behavior. These are facts that are made by men. It is only a matter of, uh, of a hierarchy and this is really the worst uh, danger of anti-Semitism, showing that our behavior has no kind of moral responsibility. If you win, you got a medal. If you, if you lose, you're hanged. This idea is terrible. It's, it's something that can be found in the social media. So it is very customary to, uh, as very often happens, victims are absent in this kind of confrontation. I wrote somewhere that Auschwitz is the representation of the silence and the solitude of victims as a silence, a general silence. And there it stayed. Germany made what wished and allies as well. And the result that we know has been seen in all his um, aspect in 1945. In, this is where we have to consider things carefully. The Jewish community all over Europe, uh, a minority that was trapped and pursued, but brilliant. Uh, in Central Europe, they couldn't understand what was happening in their own countries where they lived for, they had been living for, they lived for centuries. They had the same right uh, to happiness, to have a future, to 
grew their children to to raise their children uh, have uh, to to pursue uh, a good life thanks to their work uh, but that was not the case every year in uh, Europe and in Israel we celebrate well we remember we commemorate Shoah and we cry this is a catharsis strengthening the idea of prevailing as a people as a Jewish uh, different and equals uh, religious and uh, civil workers, artists, no matter what, whatever we like to do, we must be entitled to do. This year, every year, it is important that we have to think uh, um, the parliament because uh, um, an act accept the definition uh, the international ally for the commemoration of Holocaust. This is very important as we have a, um, a tool, a lawful tool to defend in a court, no matter what, any, any anti-Semitism, any form of anti-Semitism, uh, and the community of Jews is protected and the parliament of, uh, of uh, the Balearic Islands has the courage to promote and to pass this law and uh, had so many calls to know what was happening, uh, but it's always necessary to meet the principle of laws that we know what uh, anti-Semite behavior is and the study from that moment we have a tool of the law to go to a court or administrative bodies when they authorize or permit ponencias, uh, conferences, uh, reports uh, uh, for the denigration of Jewish people with uh, the basic idea that anti-Zionism is no uh, a fight against racism Zionism is no racism. Zionism is the path of the Jewish all over the world to a heaven. And we have to learn from what happened, but sometimes this is not sufficient. Thank you so much. Muchísimas gracias, President Ari. Para tus comentarios. Thank you so much, President Ari, for your presentation, y... for your speech, uh, and for being here with us. I would like to show you a video of uh, what uh, Ari was mentioning, the law, the ceremony, uh, where many members of the community and the parliament was lighting candles and uh, you can lose listening to a song a hum, sung by Manny Hoffman and these two videos I would like to ask you to consider this moment as the silence uh, we should uh, dedicate to the human being we lost uh, in the Shoah. This is the moment we can think about all these people. Thank you. 
happy to join this Zoom today. I'm going to sing a song, Al Rahem, in honor of all our brothers and sisters who've been murdered during the Holocaust. Rachem, Rachem Nashem Lakeinu, Rachem Al Israel Amechal Achem, Ve'al Yerushalayim Echa, Rachem, Rachem, Rachem. Ve'al Zion Mishkan Gevod Eicha Uyoy Mishkan Gevod Eicha Ve'al Malchus Ba'is David Meshich Eicha Ve'al Ameis Agadol Ve'al Kaidosh Rachem, Rachem, Rachem Ve'al Zion Mishkan Gevod Oyoy mishkan kvod eicha Ve'al malchus ba'is David meshichecha Ve'al ha'is ha'gadol ha'gaidosh Rachem, Rachem, Rachem Thank you so much, Fanny. I know you're watching us and thank you for those who are organizing this commemoration and thank you to the people who came before the association and the Limud. Thank you for all that we have done because we're nothing without the past and thank you for having the opportunity of celebrate in the parliament i would like to invite uh, riana valdez limud mallorca he will be talking about future we have to look future let's discuss our future welcome mariano uh, good Good evening. I have to talk about the future. We are not the protagonist. We, the future generation, are protagonists. So I'm telling you how this initiative works. One on our one year and a half ago, we had a news, um, teenagers in Palma um, used this picture. I decided to share it with a WhatsApp. I thought it was an important fact. I tried to read their reply and none of them was against the picture. They were all uh, sad, but without considering the teenagers as guilty for their anti-Semitism. So I decided to publish an article in a local newspaper, I started to have this idea. If those students knew the pain that was behind this picture, so which was the only position I could envisage. So it's education, it's the only way, there's no other way. So this article, I, I suggested my idea with the education department uh, of Palma. So I just wanted to explain what Shoah was in the school by considering that one of the volunteers of Limud Mallorca uh, was uh, a teacher there, so he accepted. As to the result, I only could say that uh, the feedback was uh, very, very strong and uh, made me happy. If you wish, I will show you a video about our lessons. Bueno, muy bien. Acabamos nuestra primera experiencia de clases en escuelas 
eh, instituto de ESO, de Limud Mallorca, sobre el holocausto y bueno, cuáles fueron nuestras impresiones, comenzando por Adri. Me, me sorprendió gratamente los chicos que estuvieron eh, predispuestos a escuchar, a hacer preguntas, se mm, preguntaron entre ellos con... contaron experiencias también sobre bullying y discriminación, así que creo que muy bien. Ya no. Eh, me siento conmovido, emocionado, porque creo que tener la oportunidad de hablar de esto también. De jóvenes así, el, y sentir que uno tiene cosas en común está muy, muy positivo. Dani. Uh, para mi parte también me, me siento muy... Eh, honrado y orgulloso para esta parte de esta iniciativa. Uh, para mí representa mucho de lo que es Limud, lo que es aprender y enseñar, uh, porque estos eh, jóvenes uh, hemos, hemos encontrado que muchos no sabían que era un judío o sabían muy poco de, de lo que era el holocausto y, y, y intolerancia en general. Y creo que hemos uh, dado mucho no solo la información, pero hemos hecho, hemos hecho que ellos hablaban mucho entre ellos y, y pensaban de la discriminación, intolerancia, bullying y todo esto. Y, y no, me siento muy que, que hemos tenido un, un, una, un efecto positivo en, en el mundo hoy. Muy bien, pues muy poco me queda para añadir. Creo que está prácticamente todo dicho. Eh, solamente sumar eh, la atención que pusieron los chavales todo el tiempo, el respeto. Y, y eso, no, no hubo que llamarles la atención en wish to say that I, I see hope for a new generation they will understand and see what's the root of the majority of problems we have in the humankind if we practice tolerance uh, accepting uh, other people in their diversity different way of thinking and acting and live with diversity i think this is all about i don't like i wouldn't like to continue more i have another video to share the real protagonist uh, the future um this is a classroom uh, danny joan josh and uh, adriana by Cantalupi, thank you for the drawings, and Mariano Greenberg, they uh, appeared in the video. We are in charge of telling uh, students, uh, 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 tell them about the past to avoid repeating uh, these experience in the present or in the future. They're just a tool for the new generation to improve our present by this video we are just greeting you thank you so much to all of you for uh, being with us for this commemoration Aquest grup d'adolescents escolten atentament dos nord-americans residents a Mallorca que avui han anat a la seva classe són descendents es del jueu víctima del nazismo. ¿Esto dónde los incineraban? Metían una persona por una en cada horno o metían un montón en cada Aquesta carta la varen escriure familiar de Josh Grunsberger des d'un camp de concentració. A la xerrada que fa els adolescents explica la història dels seus padrins i també de son pare, que encara és viu. Una història que deixa els joves estorats. I tenia que comer cebolla del jardín per a... a ser menos que 80 años y hoy en día todavía existe gente que ha pasado por esta historia. Cuando nos ha explicado la historia del seu, del seu pare que va a vivir a, a Baida, una carnicería a Francia y que va a estar dormint durante un par de años en una cadira, 
Allá sí que es lo que me ha impactado bastante. Que los judíos han tenido un, un, un pasado muy, muy duro. Para Dani, la visión de sus padrinos para arribar a los Estados Unidos, fugiendo del nazismo, inspira para influir las nuevas generaciones. Los chavales pueden leer muchas cosas, pueden ver muchas películas, pero si no tienes una persona enfrente de ellos hablando de su historia familiar, eh, creo que a veces es difícil para conectar. La iniciativa de cerrar las escuelas va néixer quan a una otra escuela. Unos de los lots es van a hacer una selfie en reminiscencias nazis. El colectivo Limut se va a aprender de manera positiva. Si ha sortit un tema tan importante, vean cómo nosotros podemos contribuir. Justo a 100 metros de la escuela van a morir dos víctimas de la local nazi. Una colonia alemana jueva importante se va a refugiar a Silla. Y toda esta colonia alemana va a ser expulsada por el gobierno en Franco con una notificación administrativa de que ellos eran indeseables para la nueva España. Como no tienen papeles, no tienen pasaporte, pues ni hay que intenten fugir y acaban en campos de concentración. Pero en el caso de Heinemann, que vivían aquí a esa, a esa plaza en este terreno, pues se van a suicidar, es decir, están charlando de víctimas directas de su holocausto en los nuestros carreras. ¿no? Las manos aixecadas, curiosas preguntas, meditar reflexiones y conclusiones claras por parte de unos adolescentes que tienen claro cap on mira. ¿Qué puede volver a pasar sin que nos demos cuenta en el momento? Cuando ves una injusticia hay que denunciarla. Hay que estar bien atentos porque podría ocurrir en cualquier momento. Si sabemos los errores del pasado, nos cometeremos en un futuro. Once again, in the name of the Jewish community of the Balearic Island, with President Are and Miguel Segura, with the head of the Kosher community, yeah, I wish to greet Ramiz Amin Abraham from Israel. So important for our community. And uh, Limut Mallorca that helped organizing this event and the volunteers taking part in our community and uh, the municipality and the, the Department of Education uh, that was supporting us and the Maxim and Alal that is connected today and uh, to all of you, to all the participants uh, that are watching us, uh, hundreds of people. It is so important, especially now during a connecting, to be connected, learning, sharing, do not stop feeling. And do not forget we are human beings, uh, that we have emotions. Uh, you know, we are here in Facebook uh, in the Jewish community. Uh, uh, we have a website, uh, libudmallorca.com, if we wish to keep in touch. And uh, that's it. Thank you so much for being with us uh, for this such an important day. Shalom, shalom.